Hello my friends, how are you doing? Let's talk about the latest news in AI image and video generation. This video is inspired by Matt Wolf, so check out his channel. He's really good at AI news and let's get started here. The first thing I want to talk about is that recently the Adobe Max event was and you can still watch all of the sessions online for free. I would highly, highly encourage you to do so because first of all, they have just mwah, amazing speakers for their different sessions and they show their craft and video editing, special effects, design, photography, anything you can do with Adobe and they show how and why they use the tools that way. So there's a lot of free knowledge right in there. And one thing that Adobe is showing off is this kind of AI supported image retouching and manipulation, which is really cool. It can replace things in the background. It can adjust the scene. It can add things to the scene. You can also move around objects inside of the scene and that is pretty amazing. Now, of course, I hear some people say, where is the skill in photography when you can do everything afterwards? But I want to point out at that point that photography always was a medium of manipulation and Photoshop has been around for a pretty long time. So this is not new. It's just easier now. Also, in case you didn't know that Lightroom already has a function that understands the content of an image. So here, for example, for masking, you can select the plus and then go to select people. When you do that, this will give you a list of the people in the image. In this case, there's only one person in the image. But when I click on that person, you can see here that I get a list of the facial skin, the body skin, the eyebrows, the eye sclera, which is the white part of the eye, the iris and pupil, the lips, teeth, the hair and the clothes. So I can make a mask individually for each of these parts and then adjust it afterwards. For example, to change the color of the lipstick, to make the white in the eyes brighter, to give the face a nicer shine and so on. On. And here's another thing I want to point out and that is that today we just live in a very fast, dense and crowded world. So this kind of photo manipulation I would say is a necessity for photography. So here I have a quick shot of a street in Barcelona and you might not see it right now but the image is cluttered with visual information that we just require in our everyday lives. So here I pointed all of that visual noise out to you. It's the advert advertisement, the street signs, the information, the traffic lights, the writing on the road, all of that kind of stuff that fills up everything around us because it organizes the flow of our society through that space. But of course, if you want to have a nice photo, you don't want to have a stop sign in the background or a traffic light. You want to have a nice romantic old building and then maybe a beautiful person in the foreground. So it's better to be able to manipulate and change the image afterwards. And at that point, let's come here to two different bits of information. And that is how AI is used to create advertisement and social media posts. Now, Canva is advertising right now that you can create videos with their AI. Again, I feel like Canva is a little bit over promising. It feels like they want to be the first to the market, but they haven't really found a solution for that yet. Now, even an example that they are showing here, I'm not quite convinced about the quality of the video that they are generating here. It's pretty okay for an experimentation with an AI video, but for an advertisement, not really. Maybe unless you want to have this kind of AI generated look in your ads, maybe then it's good or just you generate a funny meme. But in general, it's just not there yet. On the other hand, Meta is also coming out with their AI based ad generation. So here you can see several examples where, for example, the image is extended. This is very good for different ratios that you want to use on different devices. So to be able to adapt the image automatically to something that is vertically or horizontal is really, really useful. And then middle example, you can see that the background is replaced. Now, again, this could really help to bring advertisement to different age groups, to different ethnicities or cultural backgrounds in what they want to see, the colors, the patterns, the kind of image imagery to advertise the back to different people but respect their backgrounds and who they are. So that is actually a pretty amazing thing. And then on the right side, we are seeing an example here of text generation. Again, this can be amazing because not only do you want to be addressed in the right language that you understand, but also in the right lingo. So for example, if you're younger, you want to be addressed in a different way with different words. And when you are a little bit older, things like that can be very useful for advertisement, but for social media in 
in general also. However, this leads to the next point and that is watermarking in AI. Meta is trying to find a solution to be able to identify AI images and then watermark them as AI images. But research seems to show that all of these methods so far can easily be broken or succumb by other techniques or by just changing the image. So this is kind of a battle of AI against AI and wits against wits. Now, of course, there's this example here with Mr. Beast. Watching this video, you're one of the 10,000 lucky people who will get an iPhone 15 Pro for just $2. I'm Mr. Beast and I'm doing the world's largest iPhone 15 giveaway. Click the link below to claim yours now. And yes, I can totally see how people fall for that. However, on the other hand, on TikTok, there's often fake live streams where they just take actual real live streams from stars and then replay them on TikTok. So this is not even fake, but still people donate because they are fans. So the scammers make money with these kind of fake live streams. So I want to know in the comments what you think about that. Do we need a special level of security just for AI trickery or is it the same thing we have seen in the past and just people need to get aware about the abilities of AI. And then last but not least, Firefly 2 is out. You can use it on the Adobe website. You can see I'm here on firefly.adobe.com. And as you can also see here with these kind of images, they have various styles. They are often very nice, especially the photorealistic images. I'm not quite sure. I wouldn't say that they are on par with Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey because some of the things don't quite look right. For example, here, this kind of kids drawing of the bear has quite some mistakes and then I would say it's not a hundred percent but at the same time I will also argue that a lot of these images look very good and much much better than the Firefly 1 version so they are certainly getting there and improving that and I can't wait to see how good Firefly version 3 is going to be. Personally I think that the future of AI image and video generation is in part how good the model is trained but also very much how good the tools are that support the model to do the right thing like for example different modes of control net at detailer the LoRa's and image to image rendering everything that helps you tell the AI what you actually want to have in the colors the composition the different positions and different details of the image and then of course technologies like negative embeddings LoRa's high-res fixes or in painting that help the AI correct mistakes it made in the first run through let me know in the comments what you think about all of these kind of news. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.